had gone through Rush and I had my heart set on being in a different house and they dropped me right before preference. And so um, I went through a little bit of informal Rush at a couple houses and I, I didn't think that. It was so exciting to be with a bunch of girls who all kind of wanted to be Greek, wanted to be sorority girls, but we hadn't found a match. We just hadn't found a place where we wanted to be. But, you know, I'm going to show that other house. We're going to make this house a really good house. I just think we had a, such a monumental project underway. I mean, we it was really big to try to establish a story all by ourselves. National came here and they decided that this was going to be the next location for a chapter. I thought it sounded like a lot more fun and more of a challenge, a lot more exciting to get to be the first pledge class, to get to be the first group, to be able to set the bar like we wanted it to be. It meant that we were a part of something very special, and I've always felt that all my life. The great girls came <coughs> down from Des Moines in the fall of uh, 1960, and they had a party for us. And they had a, a theme, I think, of South Pacific. <laughs> and uh, they had a lot of people. We all kind of came in, had a good time, and then they invited several out to dinner, and then we had uh, the original pledge class, we have a picture of maybe 15 uh, from that group, and then we all fall and all winter, we started pledging and adding more to our chapter until in the April of uh, 61, there are those 40 names that you're gonna find out. They were just really charming. They were really friendly, and I think got us started to this uh, way of being friendly, being yourself. You know, and I think that a lot of the parties I went to, and I thought, oh, here I am pretending, pretending, pretending. And with the Alpha Fees, I felt I had to do that. They were in an expansive mode in those days. And uh, the only chapter in, the, in uh, Iowa at that time was at Drake. And um, so, and most people didn't even know what Alpha Fee was, but they had to have a certain number of, of uh, alums in the area to support the group. And so there were a few ladies from Cedar Rapids who came, there were a few from Iowa City, and then they actually uh, initiated, they had some alum initiates. And one of ours, to kind of a feather in our cap, was President Virgil Hancher, who had been a longtime president of the, of the <clears throat> university. Mrs. Hancher was initiated, so she was, and that, that was kind of cool to have the president's wife be, be an alum. I remember buying the house, and we were so excited, oh my goodness. House is, you know, it's going to be ours. We're going to be able to live in a house because, you know, we, the dormitories that were where as freshmen we lived. And the thought of having a house was really exciting. And I was going to be a nurse when I came into college, but something like in the spring, April, the uh, the house was getting ready. I mean, they, you know, we were had dreams and we'd come over and visit. And the nursing dormitory, the nurses told me I couldn't. I had to live in a nursing dormitory. I could not live in the Apple Fee house. So I just said, okay, I'm not going to be a nurse. And I was, became a teacher. And I've been a very happy teacher. And But this Alpha Fee house really changed my mind. I mean, changed my life. Well, this is a single now. Well, just because I remember somebody Our saying, were like that. who lives in that room with the lights never on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but oh, you were right. Mind. Yeah. I know. And Kay Arnold was over here. And Kay did try to sneak up the fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, there was a room. Someone lived in this room. Well, there was a room here. What oh. happened here? What's home? Oh. What uh, it was oh. split because the fire escape, and now that room is storage. It's just. Oh, like, no, this was a room. That was a but, room. But, um. Oh, wow. We claim that there's a, people claim there's a ghost, so. A ghost? Oh, yeah. there probably oh, is a ghost. That's Petey's room. Yeah, that's why the that's name okay. tag is on there. Oh, that's Petey's room. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, there was a whole article in the Gazette today. There's a new book out by somebody. And of course, he's talking about the Black Angel. You know what? Oh yes. Okay. No, I don't. In know. the cemetery. You don't know in the cemetery? Oh, in Iowa City. The yeah. Iowa City. Yeah. It's just, it is some, the there statue. are two other things that are here. They didn't mention Petey though. Oh but, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's here. <laughs> I know it's difficult not to be able to change the house, but because it's on the National Historic Records, 
it can't be changed. So every time we come back, it'll be the same way. I'm sure you guys used to sunbathe on the third floor on the roof. Oh, yeah. Well, they figured out last year when there was footprints all over the, the roof that we were, like, out there. And so they put alarms on all our windows. <laughs> oh, I used to sit up there a lot. Yeah. They don't want you to sunbathe? I mean, it's a liability if someone were to fall, fall off the roof. Off or, yeah. You know, in all these floor, years, how many have fallen off? Exactly. You know, they're, they're, they're fun suckers. They're taking all their fun away. It was really cool to see what they started and to see, like, the legacy carry on and to interact with the founding members who established us here at the University of Iowa. Um, they were all very friendly and talked about their memories in the house, especially giving them a tour and um, hearing all their stories that are so similar to what we have created here and we also do as a system. I was on my way to that 430 class when Marty Whitmore came across the, uh, the uh, Pentecost and she just, she said he died and I thought she meant Larry and I thought, oh, what? Well, it was when President Kennedy you got shot. Oh, so you were downtown. Oh. I was down. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And I raced back here because I mean classes then were canceled. Yeah, so yeah, because that was the big Iowa Notre Dame football yeah. game. Canceled. Notre Dame was here. Oh my for gosh! That. In those days, I mean, the last thing we would ever dream of was that our president would be shot. Now it seems like anybody can be shot. But in those days, that was absolutely. I mean, it blew our minds, and we all gathered here, and gathered around the television. And I remember very. I mean, we were just shocked. But then that Sunday, a lot of people went to church that Sunday. We hadn't gone for a long time. But we were gathered around the, the, the TV was in the living room at that time, the only one. And we were gathered around when Oswald was shot by Jack Ruby. And then we thought it really was the end of the world. You go through Russia and actively sit on the floor with the, the ashtray in their hand. <laughs> and everybody's hand. And, and the actors would hold the ashtray. <coughs> yeah, for everybody to do. And, and the, the big thing was, and what's going to be your major? <laughs> That's about how in depth it got. <laughs> so those are just, but it was still fun, and you did end up, I don't know how, but you did end up with the right sisters. <laughs> Remember a luau that we had that was. Uh, very special, started early in the day, and that was, I've just seen pictures of, of some of us in luau dress. I remember, um, uh, I think, going to uh, uh, Joni Weaver's uh, cottage, family cottage, uh, near her home uh, for a weekend, and um, a whole lot of us went and just had a wonderful time. Um, I thought there were, I think there were mice there. I'm quite sure there were mice, so I chose an upper deck, or upper bunk, and I made a great fuss about being in an upper bunk, and then later I saw that the mice had knew how to climb to the upper bunk, so it was, was no problem. And I remember I, I drove, uh, I had driven my convertible over, I think it was at Wapolo, in Iowa, and I'd driven my convertible over, and when I went home, I, it was such a nice day that I, and I'd been in the bathing suit, because this was, I think this was on a lake, and um, so we were all in our reading suits, and I just drove home that way, and my mother was scandalized. You drove with the top down in that two-piece bathing suit, so not pleased. But um, I think some of the things, I, I brought all my pledged sisters home one time, that, not all of them, but a, a crowd of them, and, and we were just very, very close and, and stayed close outside of just here, you know, so it was funny. We were all very different, I would say, and when you look at the old pictures from the old Hawkeyes, you can see that. I look at you gals, and I feel the same way. I really think everyone's a little different. You don't have to be a certain thing to be an Alpha Phi, but you've got special talents and assets and all that. I, I just really think it's been carried through all these 50 years. I joined Alpha Phi because all the girls are so welcoming and it just felt right and it felt like home. I felt comfortable with everybody and I thought that I would fit in really well. It was another family that I could have away from home and I love the girls. So that's the main reason. <laughs> and my mom was an Alpha Phi. <laughs> I knew the second I walked in. But I feel like that's really cheesy to say that. It's just nice to have people to fall back on and they're always there for you. Wow, we're setting up the ice for Alpha Phi. These are um, icicle lights. We couldn't get up on the roof, so we decided to do it across here. Yeah, there we go. Wait, this isn't plugged in. Ha! 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 And go. It's really little Christmas. There we go. Yay. Oh, this is kind of a little baby. This is a little guy. Every time we're together. 
we're just as good friends as we as we were when we were freshmen. You know, it just there was a real strong, strong bond established. Sally, Elia there, and Kiki and I get together <coughs> with three other Alpha Phi's from our pledge class we meet every year in Florida for three days. It is so fun, <laughs> and we get back to the same old topics. Sally, why did you eliminate that? <laughs> to know that they're all still such close friends and it's fun to see that because I think the same I'll have the same thing when I come back and visit having like just all those memories come back the instant they step back into this house it's just cool that you can have that many relationships yeah. like once you graduate yeah I can see being friends with most of these people forever it's that's a lot to say after coming back from like high school and only seeing about two people from high school, I don't see that happening with some of the girls here for sure. <laughs> when my older sister and I and my younger sister would talk about the house, Joan would always say, you know, I really wish that there was something that, that had our names on them. You know, all those who, who were the founders of the chapter. We got the founders of the sorority, but we, we don't have the founders of the chapter. So when Joan died in July, Janie and I decided there needed to be a plan. And now you have it. And you know, everything changes. You know, rules of the house, we all are laughing about that. But but as far as just really who the girls are, you know, you're, you're an Alpha Phi. I mean, this is the stand, the Alpha Phi is be your own person, be true to yourself, be um, the best thing you can be. I mean, we were always encouraged that way, and I think that's what the girls are. Every time I walk into this house, I feel, yeah, this, this feels good. <laughs> it's not just a four-year experience. It's a lifetime of friendships and memories. I'm so proud of you gals. I just, I think you're doing, I think Alpha Phi has built itself and maintained a reputation and a standard that we all were aiming for in the very first year.